Once upon a time, in the ancient land of Israel, there lived a queen named Jezebel. She was famous for her beauty, but she was also known for her cruelty. Jezebel was the daughter of a powerful king in Sidon, a wealthy kingdom by the sea. When she married King Ahab of Israel, she brought her own beliefs. She worshipped the god Baal and convinced her husband and people to do the same. Jezebel was clever, fearless, and always got her way. She ruled alongside Ahab as though she herself were queen and king. With her beauty and fierce determination, Jezebel pushed Israel to worship Baal and turned the people away from the God of Israel. She even hunted down and killed the prophets of God, anyone who dared to speak out against her. Yet one prophet remained, the brave Elijah, who continued to warn her that her evil deeds would lead to her downfall. In a powerful moment, Elijah foretold that God would bring Jezebel's reign of evil to a brutal end and that one day her body would be eaten by dogs in the streets. But Jezebel didn't listen, and she ruled on, confident that her power and charm would protect her. When King Ahab died, Jezebel still lived in the royal palace, watching as her sons took the throne one after another. But God's warning still loomed over her. She was about to meet her match. God had chosen a new man, a warrior named Jehu, to bring justice to the land. Jehu was bold, fearless, and determined to end Jezebel's reign. With a fierce army at his side, he rode toward Jezebel's palace, conquering her family and wiping out her influence across Israel. By the time he had defeated Jezebel's son, Joram, Jezebel knew Jehu would soon come for her. But Jezebel wasn't the kind of queen to run or hide. No, she was determined to face Jehu her own way. In her palace, Jezebel prepared herself. She put on her finest robes, did her hair just right, and carefully painted her eyes with dark coal. Her gaze was cold, proud, and defiant as she adorned herself with jewels, looking every bit the queen. She walked to her high window and waited, watching over the palace courtyard as Jehu approached. She believed her power and beauty would still give her control. Soon, Jehu's chariot stormed into the courtyard, and Jezebel looked down at him, mocking him with a taunt as he arrived. But Jehu wasn't interested in games. He ignored her words and looked up at her servant standing near her in the window. With a stern voice, he commanded, Throw her down! To Jezebel's shock, her own servants turned on her. With one powerful heave, they grabbed her and tossed her out the window. For a moment, she tumbled through the air, her robes billowing, her jewels catching the sunlight. She hit the ground with a terrible force, her royal pride shattered. And in that same moment, Jehu's chariot rolled over her fallen body, leaving her broken in the dirt. Jezebel, once so powerful, was left humiliated and powerless. Jehu entered the palace for a meal, barely giving her a second thought. Afterward, he ordered his men to go back and bury her, saying that even though she was wicked, she had been a queen. But when they returned to the courtyard, they found almost nothing left of her. Wild dogs had come, just as the prophet Elijah had foretold. They had devoured her remains, leaving only her skull, her hands, and her feet. And so, Jezebel's story ended in a shocking and tragic way. Her beauty, her power, and her manipulation had brought her control over the kingdom but it couldn't save her in the end. Her story became a powerful warning to all who heard it. No matter how strong, clever, or beautiful one may be, no one is beyond the reach of justice.